In light of what we've seen from Ford, for example, cutting battery orders because they're losing so much on each EV that they're making, are U.S. producers really equipped to deliver on this? Or are we going to need to rely on imports in a clean energy future? Well, there, there's a couple things going on here. One is that we need a level playing field uh, with China. And they're not playing by the rules. They're fully subsidizing their EV market. And that's what you what we are going to get with the tariffs that Biden put into place. At the same time, because the Democratic majority and President Biden passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which was the largest climate bill in history, uh, but also large climate policy meeting industrial policy. So now we've got investments of scale going into EV battery production here in the United States alongside not just the namesake companies like Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, but the supply chain and investments from the Midwest to the, the South and, and certainly into, into the West. And so tariffs don't necessarily create a marketplace, but the public-private partnership model that we have produced alongside American manufacturers who are competing globally, that's what's going to win the day. And we see this example with the CHIPS Act, for instance, $52 billion put out into the marketplace, and within one fiscal quarter, $200 $200 billion in private sector contributions flooding into that market. And so I've spent a lot of time with Ford, certainly as a representative here in Michigan, and, and I, I know the agenda and I know the goals that they want to achieve. They're global automakers, and it's also not necessarily linear, right, in terms of sales. So one quarter, it's one way. You see uh, Tesla taking some dips. Their their prices are certainly too high. Our domestic automakers yeah. are coming into play. and. And, and that's what we're witnessing here. Well, I'm curious to ask you that uh, maybe same question from a different angle, Congresswoman. I can't go to the dealership here in D.C. and buy a BYD or a Zeker or a Chinese EV that I'm aware of. So what is it that you're anticipating that these tariffs will help to correct? Well, we certainly don't want you to buy a BYD. We want you, and we don't want you at the dealership in D.C., Joe. We want you at the dealership in Michigan, <laughs> you know, Wholesale. on Wooden yeah. Avenue in, in Oakland County, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, come on, I'll give you the tour. But uh, You got a look, guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, President Biden's got his finger on the pulse on this. And and what we didn't want to see is, is what's taking place in Europe, which is the open market. You know, we are a free, open market, capitalist democracy. Let's continue to win that day, the, win the day with that model, certainly. Uh, but it gets exploited uh, by the CCP and CCP-owned entities. Now, what we've seen with Donald Trump is... On one hand, he's saying no one's going to buy EVs. EVs are a terrible model. And on the other hand, he's saying, oh, well, the Chinese are going to flood our marketplace with their EVs. It's a balance, right? We've got automakers who years ago sat down with lawmakers and said, this is where we're going. This is we know this is where the world is going. Energy efficiency, net zero. We need to transition. We need to transform. This is why we did this co-investment structure. We invested in batteries in the 2010s, then scaled back from batteries, sold, saw American companies get sold to China. They own the technology. Now we see that investment coming back. There's a company right here in Michigan, in Oakland County, Our Next Energy stands for one, and they're doing fuel cell batteries. They're, 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 they're making these mm-hmm. things in Michigan right now. I want my automakers buying those batteries. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Congresswoman, I'm not sure if Joe Matthews is going to make a trip to Michigan to buy a car or not. But I do know that Joe Biden is going to be making a trip to Michigan this weekend. He'll be in Detroit on Sunday. He's headlining a dinner of the Detroit branch of the NAACP, part of a lot of effort we have seen this week to reach out to black voters. We're seeing polls consistently show he is losing traction among that group. Some of your colleagues, Democrats in the House, including Jim Clyburn, have suggested they don't believe those polls. Do you? Well, I I think that we can choose to be reactive to every single poll or we can continue to do the work. And right now, 
the Biden campaign alongside the Biden administration is doing the work. They are invested in Michigan. They are not just paying lip service. You see the president making some announcements that are very important to the black community, certainly rescheduling marijuana as one, the elevating of the next generation of black leaders, black business leaders, some of the work that he's doing with the Small Business Administration. This dinner that the president is going to be coming to, the NAACP dinner, I just got the report. There's almost 10,000 people who are going to be there. It is one of the largest dinners in the country. And it is going to be a really important moment for him. It's something that he he spoke at uh, when he was vice president. He's spoken at this dinner before. But I, I want him there alongside all the leaders that he has had in his administration shaping the trajectory of this country. We know that in Michigan, when Donald Trump was president, we were at 7% unemployment. Now Detroit's at its lowest levels of unemployment in 50 years.